so here we have the radar uh, the pipe hawk 2 and what they normally do they suffer from dead batteries i think this is the charger and the data port we need to figure that out uh, you can extract the data it, it sound it feels it feels a bit light so the battery might be out uh, yeah we just need to power it up with some external power supply the antenna is here connector looks good no corrosion or not much at least and uh, it just goes into a plastic in the plane yeah apart from the broken glass which is hopefully just a protective glass rather than the display I don't know we'll find that out in a minute um, I have no idea how it works I think I found a instruction manual somewhere on the internet and then we go into it and see if we can get it to life it was pretty cheap so it's for the gamble because these things are quite expensive and it's handy to find pipes on the ground and power cables and things like that because I don't know anything about, about the property here All right uh, let's get a coffee do a phone call and then I'll come back Welcome back. So today we're looking into this uh, ground radar and uh, yeah, just have a look inside and find out what's wrong with it. Apparently it's spares or repair, that's how I bought it. So let's get the battery compartment off and see if there is anything in it. If not, we need to supply some external voltage and see if it powers up or not. And then we go from there. Uh, Obviously there was no drawings available. Um, the company still exists. I know very little about it. Apparently the company doesn't sell this thing anymore. Um, I guess it's probably about 10 years old, maybe maybe older. We'll find out. There is some sort of computer in it. I don't know if it's a Windows machine or if it's some embedded system. We'll find out. Okay, as expected, look at that. It doesn't look there's anything in the battery compartment, which uh, explains why it doesn't work. The belt for the encoder is still there, antenna connector is there as well. So all we need is external power. Probably the battery was shot or something like that. Apparently this is a hinge here. Yeah, well, there was a battery in its glory days. I would start with 12 volts, maybe. Then if it's 12 or 24, who knows? No one knows. All right, let's get some 12 volt power. Okay, we had to apply 12 volts. Ish. Maybe it's 24, I don't know. Doesn't say anything. We checked the fuse, the fuse is okay, but it doesn't come to life. So it looks like the processor is in here somehow. I don't know if the, maybe it needs the antenna to come live. I don't know question is how does this thing come apart usually there is a simple trick because this thing is metal makes sense to be shielded um, we need to dig a little bit deeper and find out what's wrong here and again it could be 24 volts uh, but it does not say anything well it's quite a tricky design so you got a stop shaft which sticks on here and apparently this is held by some bolts probably with these allen screws here um, I couldn't get the other stop shaft out the center shaft needs to come out as well so uh, there is a possibility that this is held with the with the encoder wheel here it's possible because I can't see any other 
bolt here. But yeah, it's tricky because the shaft needs to come out so you, you can take the four bolts out at the bottom and then you should be able to take the whole electronics compartment out. Everything is shielded obviously. Uh, yeah, so that's the plan for now. Getting the shaft out and <laughs> find out how the rest works. What I think is it's just stuck because it's got to come out to one side. Uh, let me get a plastic mallet. I'm gonna hammer it out. I think the the grub screws damage the surface enough to make it binding. Well, as expected, it was just binding. So they made that really tricky, probably to avoid to a public to take it apart. <laughs> I don't know. What it needs because the shaft needs to come out, otherwise you cannot take the whole thing out of the frame. So we need some extension, push that shaft through. Uh, the, so the, the left side is fixed with that grub screw. The right side comes off. Once you take the wheel off and then you can bang it through. And then turn it around, take the screws out at the bottom and hopefully electronics compartment comes out might be the handle needs to come out as well because there is some there's something here which because that goes through that's what I found I really think this is just Joe public avoidance here so you need a long socket and uh, get it out as far as you can and there is a 17 millimeter nut inside on the right hand side there is a nylock, on the left hand side there is a normal one, but it's very deep inside, so you may just about, I need to hold the other side, yeah, you need to hold it on one side and then move it on the other side and get it loose, uh, yeah, I need two hands, so get this, get this shaft out here, and then the cups come out, and then the electronics should be loose. Well, it's actually the other way around. This is a locked nut. You can see it here. You can see it here. There's a pinned nut, so this doesn't move. The nylon is on this side, so just pull the thing out. Then the cup should come out. And this cup as well. There you go. Get the other cup. So now it should be free so far. Now we tip it over, get the bottom bolts out, and then hopefully we got the electronics in hand. Yeah, you got the other bolts here. They, yeah, I think they're rivet nuts, so they should just come out. So let me just take these four out, and there is nothing else. I just took the antenna cable in there. So the whole thing should come out. I love it if the plan works out. So here we got the whole electronics box. Just need to figure out which way this thing comes apart. But I think this is the bottom. Yeah, that's all it is. That's some dielectric foam, I believe. So let's get rid of that thing, it's just big and bulky. We don't need that right now. So get rid of the wheels and the plastic case. So we got the electronics compartment out. I believe these bolts need to come out. And then we can take the electronics box out because I think these bolts are actually holding the whole stuff inside. So we need to get that out. Makes sense to me. And then we just have the frame left, which can go elsewhere as well. We don't need that really. Okay, let's try that. So we got the little bastard out. There is another plug here. Down here, that's the. pseudo keyboard thing. So here we got the whole thing out. 
Let's see what's inside. I suspect the Windows computer. No, it's little cam locks or bolts. Um, yeah, so this doesn't need to come out. And this is the, it's called engineering port, but uh, whatever. Display is a standard VGA connector. And this one is the switch panel, which are probably a keyboard emulation. I think so. So we expect to find a keyboard port somewhere inside. Uh, yeah, I think it's a standard. Windows machine from the pictures I've seen on some um, how the screen looks and everything I think it's probably something I like anyway uh, there is a possibility that it, that it doesn't work without antenna there might be some safety features I don't know but uh, let's have a look inside first just to figure out what's going on there All right. Uh, let's give that a try. I think these guys are suffering from some paranoia. These are actually torques. Um, I just tried a socket. And it, doesn't, it doesn't look right. Um, yeah. Why? Just to make sure you can't take it apart or what? Yeah, the whole thing is designed in a way it doesn't make it obvious how it comes apart and uh, yeah you need to spend some time to look at before you actually damage something all right let me get a torque socket set and uh, get them out well we got it sort of open uh, and i can tell you it's a at slot machine because it's a standard pc slot from the old days um, i still haven't figured out what the trick is here because I can't believe this is so difficult to get it apart um, apart from this funny Torx bolts something isn't right there uh, looks like there was a hard disk down there which I have no idea how it comes out the case can't be split so everything has to go in this way it's interesting, I was thinking the RF comes from here, but apparently it looks like the RX and TX is in the antenna. There's no radio frequency stuff inside here. Maybe on this board a little bit? It doesn't look like. Not at all. So I think the whole RF stuff is in the antenna. Which may make it possible that um, that it may not turn on without an antenna anyway we need to look into it anyway because there is most likely a battery on the main board somewhere and which is very likely to drain out so it's gonna come out and then we just boot the machine up with a more keyboard and a monitor and see what it does alright well dig on further what the problem is here it's I think it's not a problem it's just a understanding how it works or how it comes out it's just it's very tight actually so look at so these are just the card retainers here and then we can move that away and it comes apart somehow <laughs> it's just getting it apart well, uh, we still need to figure out where the power comes from, but we will get there. Uh, the processor is probably a 386 something, maybe. There's a battery on it, and it's a standard board. There is a keyboard port, maybe. I'll see one. Maybe one of those is a keyboard port. 
Anyway, we need to find out how we're gonna power this thing up. At least ruin it now. Okay, we get there. One thing after the other. So it's working. Apparently, I haven't connected the antenna right now. So, software is running. Uh, we need to take a copy of the disk. Anyway. I'm happy so far. Computer runs. Got a few issues there, but uh, we'll get there. Mm -hmm.